So to truly understand cloud computing, we have to understand how we got to cloud hosting. And the way to do that is we're gonna walk through uh, how servers changed over time and uh, the benefits and drawbacks to these different types of servers. So the first on our list here is a dedicated server. This was a physical machine that you would go out to a store and you'd purchase and you'd put it in your office. You'd have to set up the networking, install everything, even install the operating system. Uh, and the great thing about these things is that you would get full control over your server. And so theoretically, you would have the highest level of security possible. I say it's uh, theoretical because of course, with cloud computing, you have all these additional uh, services that monitor and do things for you. But uh, this was, again, the uh, earliest option out there. Um, and so they're still in use. We still have dedicated servers today, but you know, it just made it very inaccessible for most people to be able to run web apps or uh, et cetera. Then we had virtual private servers. So we're still using one physical machine, but now what we've done is we've isolated, uh, uh, virtually isolated our application using something called virtual machines, basically into submachines, and that allows us to run multiple workloads because if you have different machines with, or sorry, different apps with different requirements, um, by virtualizing the machine, we're now able to meet the needs of each application. Uh, and so that was the evolution there. Uh, going from there, we had shared hosting. This became very popular in the early 2000s. If you've ever used GoDaddy or HostGator, you've used shared hosting. The idea is you'd have one physical machine, and instead of virtually isolating uh, each customer or tenant from each other, you just had a folder on the machine. And you could have hundreds and hundreds of businesses on a single machine, and the way the system worked is that you know, you had uh, limits in place, but also uh, there was the expectation that there just are, would be a lot of people that would be underutilizing the physical machine. And so there'd just be a few people that might overutilize it. And so it'd work out to be very cheap. Uh, but, you know, because it's not full virtualization, uh, you don't have full access to the OS uh, and things like that. So it was very limited. And there was also the chance that some other customer could end up um, over utilizing the machine and that could impact your workload. All right. So then came along cloud hosting. And this is where instead of having a single machine, you had multiple machines uh, and they would have virtualization, right? And so the idea is that now uh, you can have a lot more customers on the exact same machine and it's highly distributed. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, one customer overusing a single machine and you basically get the best of all worlds. So it's flexible, scalable, it's really secure, it's really cost effective, it's highly configurable. And that's basically the reason why cloud hosting or cloud computing is so uh, uh, popular today.